Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, today we are going to be preaching from the book of Mark, chapter 10. Uh, before we begin, I'd just like to uh, open in prayer, and I'd like to remind the board members uh, that um, pastoral review will be happening this afternoon um, after the service. Uh, it'll be happening by Zoom with our district superintendent, Ian Fitzpatrick. So um, I've announced it for two Sundays in a row as per the manual. All right. So let's open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning. We lift up this message. We lift up your word, Lord, as we read uh, about a miracle that Jesus performed. Lord, uh, touch our hearts, uh, touch our minds, help us to see what the message has to say for us, Lord. We thank you. Uh, I pray for uh, healing for those people who in our church who are struggling uh, right now, Lord. And I thank you for the fact that my cousin uh, Chelsea is uh, home now. And uh, I pray for Cheryl as she's uh, receiving treatments, Lord. And I pray for all those who are uh, going through treatments and everything. Um, just bless all of this and heal us, Lord. In Christ's name, amen. So as I said earlier, uh, Mark chapter 10 um, I'm reading from the New International Version this morning, verses 46 to 52. So it says, Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man named Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth had begun when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. <clears throat> what do you want? me to do for you, Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, Jesus said. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. I just, I just find this to be a, a very interesting story, not just because this, it's the story of a miracle, a miracle of a man who was blind and was able to see. I find it amazing to see what being able to see did for this man. So let's just go back to the beginning of the story, all right? And we'll go through it a verse or two at a time. It says, Then they came to Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. Now, Jesus and his disciples were doing what they did. Uh, Jesus traveled a lot along the road and went to different towns and different villages and he preached and he talked to people and he healed people. And uh, so now, just for a second, just for a second, try and put yourself in the shoes of the man who was begging. Put yourself in the shoes of the blind man. His life was basically hopeless. Um, we live in a culture in a day and an age where uh, people that struggle with physical handicaps are, are looked after, are, are taken care of, are uh, taught different skills. Or you see people with dogs that are helping them and animals, and that's not the world he was living in. Uh, the world he was living in was he was destitute. Uh, he was destined to beg for money. Uh, for the rest of his life. He, every, every day his life focus was dependent on the generosity of the people he could not see. Uh, he, he sat down and he would spread out his cloak most likely on the ground and he would sit on it and people would drop their coins on the cloak. And, 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 and feel, think of this, feeling around on the cloak to find that coin. Um, and at the end of the day, hope that you had collected enough generosity to be able to feed yourself. Uh, that was his life. Everybody, and, er, and, and you need to understand that everybody would have heard of Jesus and the healings and the miracles and the words he had preached, right? Uh, Jesus was becoming pretty famous in that part of the world. And, uh, but what hope would 
that bring to him? A blind man who had no way to go to Jesus, right? There, there, he had no way to, to, he probably had someone who led him to the temple and, and deposited him. And, and I really mean that word, just deposited him at the gate uh, so he could beg for the day. Uh, he had no hope of someone saying, okay, let's, let's go find Jesus. Let's go hunt him down. The, 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 we live in a day and an age of, of communication, and you can search out anybody, really. You know, uh, pretty much everybody's wearing a cell phone or carrying a cell phone around. You, you can get a hold of anybody. You can call someone. And re- Think of that culture, that time. Uh, you heard where Jesus was two weeks ago, maybe, because it was all by word of mouth. So he had no way to go to Jesus. But in the next verse it says, when he heard that Jesus of, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So again, put yourself in this man's shoes. Uh, Jesus, the one everybody is talking about, the, the one that is doing all the he- healings, the one who is performing all the miracles, the one who is bringing some kind of hope is walking down the street. Right? So, so all of a sudden, the, in this midst of this hopeless life, there is a spark of hope. So he shouts, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus never rebuked him for calling him the Son of David. Uh, and, and that's pretty interesting because, you know, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And we're going to get into that a little bit. But now remember, Jesus, Jesus is on the way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, but Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem to face the cross. And he knows very well. And so he doesn't say, hey, don't call me that. He doesn't say, hey, sh- sh- it's not time. Because reality is for Jesus, it is time. It is time to head towards the cross. So Uh, In Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 5 and 6, it said, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. And then in Ezekiel it says, I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them, he will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is all prophecy about the fact that a son of David, a descendant of David, would reign forever. So uh, somehow this, uh, this man knows the details of of uh, Jesus' family. He knows that he's a descendant of the family of David. When uh, I say Jesus was becoming famous, I mean it. They, they even know his lineage. They know where he comes from. And of course, he's calling to Jesus. Like, wouldn't you? If we, if we really did examine this man's life, if we, if we really did put ourselves in this man's shoes, if we really could understand and have empathy with his hopelessness and the fact that he was blind and the fact that he was destined to beg for the rest of his life, when he hears that Jesus is coming and he's shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Well, well, wouldn't you, if you were him, put yourself in those shoes? In verse 48, it says, Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And I don't blame this guy. This is my one chance. This is my hope. Would you be quiet if you were in his shoes? If you had to live his life and you finally meet the one person that you believe uh, can help you? A couple people tell you to stop, would you? I wouldn't. No way they could keep me quiet. So in verses 49 and 50, it says, Jesus stopped and said, call him. If you read this this, uh, story in your Bible, and if it's a red letter edition, you realize that there's not a lot of red letters in this passage of Scripture. Right now we have the first two words that we know that Jesus says. So they call the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. You see, Jesus hears the pleading of this man 
over the noise of the crowd, right? There was a large crowd, and he, and he calls him forward. Um, I just think that gives us a glimpse, just, just a glimpse of the heart of Jesus. And, and, and I just want it to be an encouragement to each and every one of you that when you call out to Jesus in the noise of this world, in the noise of your life, in the midst of all of everything that's going on, he hears you. So, I, and I also want you to notice that this fickle crowd changes their attitude with just two words from Jesus, right? They go, they go from telling this man, would you just shut up? Would you just shut up to, hey, come over here, he wants to talk to you. The, the fickle crowd changes their opinion. Now, there's something very important said there that, that it's easy to miss. It says, he threw his cloak aside. When I read this passage of scripture, that's what jumped out at me. We need to understand, as I said earlier, that most likely he put his cloak on the ground to collect the, the, the offerings that were given by the generosity of the people, right? Th this was his world, this cloak. Everything that fell on that cloak was the most important thing in his life at that point. And two words from Jesus, and he threw it away. Uh, we don't know if there was coins on it. Like I said, maybe he fished around and collected the coins. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he just left the coins there. And at the end of the day, gathered it up. But if you read this, he didn't, he didn't take the time to search and see if there was any coins. Jesus called him, and he threw the cloak aside. And it says that word. So the money, the money that was the whole focus of his life became rubbish at the call of Jesus and the hope that he brings. So I, I felt like I, I knew exactly how this man felt. It was not, he, it, I was not physically blind, right? I, I'm, I'm talking about my own life now. I, I feel that I know exactly where he was. I, I was never physically blind. However, like this man wandering around in the dark looking for Jesus who was calling me. That's that, I remember coming to that church and I remember that, that God was just relentless with me. Um, not an audible thing, but I just knew that God was saying, come here, get closer, get closer. And I was taking these little tiny steps moving forward. So I feel that as I stumbled around in the darkness of my life and Jesus was calling me, uh, I kind of understand what this guy's going through. But whatever, uh, in Philippians 3, verses 7 and 8, and we're going to go back to the, the idea of this man throwing away everything that he had on that cloak to, follow, to, to go to Jesus, to receive what Jesus had for him. In Philippians 3, verses 7 and 8, and this is the words of Paul. It says, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing uh, worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Th th this is a perfect example of this. This cloak that meant so much to him, this, this focus of his world that meant so much to him, he tosses it aside at the call of Jesus. Whether he knows it or not, this is right... Uh, whether this man understands what's happening or not, he is about to understand that earthly wealth is filthy rags compared to the love of Christ. He is about to see this. So in verse 51, he says, and these are the last, or the, the second block of uh, red letters, the words of Jesus in this passage of Scripture. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And the blind man says, Rabbi, I want to see. Uh, basically, what do you want? Uh, I, 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 I just, I already knew the answer before the... He already knew the answer before the question was asked. Jesus knew what the answer was. He knew what the question was going to be. But he says it out loud because the crowd has to hear it. What do you want? What do you need? What do you want me to do for you? Uh, and, I, and I want you to step beyond the obvious physical need and look at the real problem here. You see, uh, this is national, right? At that point in time, the nation was looking for a warrior king. Because they understood their enemy to be the Romans. 
right? And they wanted a warrior king to come in and wipe out their enemy, not realizing that the enemy was the sin in their life and the thing that separated them from God. This man thought his eyes were the problem. But in verse 52, he says, go. Your faith has healed you. So, so somebody would say, what faith? Faith enough to not let the crowd shut him up. Faith enough to throw his cloak aside and stand up and go to Jesus when he calls him. And it says, immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. No big dramatics on Jesus' part. He didn't, he didn't do the thing where he spit in the dirt and rubbed it on his eyes. He just said, go, go, your faith has healed you. You're just healed. But notice the man does not go. He does not go back to picking up his money that we read about. He doesn't go back to the person he was. He doesn't even go home to tell his family, say, hey, I can see now. But he doesn't go, but now he follows. My whole point is this. When we meet Jesus, we can see truth. And the truth sets you free. You want to, and, and you want to follow the truth. We, we sing that song, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. We are blinded to the salvation. We are blinded to the truth of Christ. This is where I was. This is the condition that I was in. This is how blinded I was to the truth. And now, and now I can see. People say to me, uh, how do you know that Jesus saved you? Because I was there when it happened. And I saw the truth. I can see that at one point in my life, I could see that I was lost. And I could see the truth for the first time. And you know what? I want to follow the truth. Just like this man, I want to follow the truth. So I, I want to I wanna close with this, with this one question because I always like to close with a question. I've got to give you something to chew on for the week. How's your vision? How well can you see uh, who you are? How well can you see where you are? I've said many, many times in my sermons, uh, when I came to faith, I went looking for myself. You know, you know the hippie age, I've got to find myself. Well, I found myself. And you know what? I didn't like who I found. And I didn't like what I found. What I found was a man who was hopelessly lost. To quote my dear friend John Shulman, I had both feet firmly planted in midair. And I thought I was in control of my life. And with a few words from Jesus, I came to the realization of how blind I was to the truth of this world. So how's your vision? Do you know him? Is he calling you? Do you want to see do you want to see the truth? Do you want to see the reality? Because I'm going to warn you right now. Most preachers won't do this, but I'm going to warn you that if you meet him, it will change your life. I'm going to encourage you that it'll change it for the good, but I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easy. But Jesus wants you to follow. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the message that you, you have in this world. I thank you for this man who was uh, hopelessly blinded on the side of the road, begging to survive. And you reached into that life, and you not only physically caused him to see, but you spiritually caused him to see that he could understand what it meant to say, Son of David. That he could look at Jesus and say, This is the truth and that he followed you down the road. Lord, help me as I follow you down this road. Help us all as we follow you down this road. Restore our sight. Help us to see your love in our lives. Watch over our families and friends and protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, everybody.